love to. I mean, he just loves to. Certainly the campaign. Yeah. Um, he does have to win the next one. He can't lose the next one. Although you say that, and like, with, if his personality is like that, then, right, for dog catcher, and well. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen him since the news came out, but. I mean, I would think running for Congress for him is certainly less dazzling, a little bit of a step down, but he, but since he has to win the next one, it seems like this would be a race that would be kind of tailor -made. Yeah, well. I still <laughs> like to see you darted on that ballot one day, so keep us posted. Okay. Okay, yeah. How old is he? Gosh, um, well, he's in his 50s, right? Oh, so, yeah. I'm not a four. I can't get to a quorum. Doug, Pat, or Wayne. Did I say Wayne twice? Clarissa, do we know of anyone not coming? Pat Gerard is not coming. We are expecting Wayne Gates said yes, and Doug Beavis did not respond. If my cat, I can watch my cab, my phone going in the cab. Oh, you left, left it in the cab? No, but I have to find my iPhone. I can throw it in. Um, <laughs> um, well, I back this morning from somewhere? Or what were you going to do? I was in the car. Oh, my God. On 25, coming here. This morning? But I was, I was a passenger. Oh, my God. Right. Uh, you had a rough couple days. I went to the eye doctor this morning because my eye, my left eye, well, uh, I now know has uh, some kind of like blood vessel burst in there. So I like, I think I'm a fashion model and I have like hair below my yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't see. Well, <laughs> you weren't driving, were you? No. So then, so Abby was driving and, um, is she okay? She's okay. The kids, the kids are in the car. They yeah. work and they're okay. God. But, I'm going to hang out with the side of my I gotta call that taxi and get my camera back. Uh. Do you want to go do that? I mean, well, I don't have a phone. No, I mean, um, use a phone. Do you want to use my phone? Um. Seven, yeah. seven, 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 seven. Is that the number? Yeah, something like that, right? Here, let me see. It may be that. Um, or I can look it up on, uh, here. I love that feature where you can make your sound, make your phone, find it. I don't know how that works. It makes works. this radar oh, I'd like that. beeping sound. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. Um, so you lost it in your house, you can find it. Yes. But not if it's on the cab driving across the highway. No, and maybe it's not good to do no, that while um, the guy's driving. <laughs> you know, but but um, uh, Julie was just telling me that she did a, uh, the app to her son's phone. So she tracks where he is. Uh, with it, like a, like a radar. Interesting. So did you ever make it on your trip, or did you have to... Oh, no, we were in Montreal. The, it was it was my first time seeing Montreal. Yeah, I've never been there. It's a beautiful city. Oh, we had great. a lot to talk about transit and the <laughs> we took yeah. a seven forty seven BRT from the airport to our hotel downtown. Right. And so the BRT does a constant loop through the downtown area. Yes, hello. I was I 
Thank you. 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 Thank you
is there, we, we could go ahead and get started on parts of the agenda that don't require a quorum to vote, so we could hold up, we could start the meeting. That's a great idea. Okay, yeah. so I call this meeting to order. Uh, do we have any public comments? I don't see anyone here, so we'll move on. Uh, we're going to skip over the action items on the agenda, which include approving the minutes and uh, approving a contract for our state lobbyist. We're going, we don't have a quorum to vote on that, so we're going to move ahead to information items, which is uh, number four on the agenda. Um, as you all will see in your packet, this legislative agenda is much the same items that we had put together for last year because we're still working on them. We encountered a number of different um, setbacks and challenges with this past legislative session, which I think we know well, and uh, rather comment on anything um, as we go forward. But really what is most helpful today is to really talk about our strategy. Yeah. Uh, we do have a, a, a our, our timeline because our our, our first week meeting start in September, so that means we would, we would need to look at um, having a substantial discussion today about strategy, so that we can uh, so that the general board approve the legislative priorities and strategy at the end of August. And that way we have our game plan to go forward and get ready for when these committee meetings uh, in September. Right, so just to um, fill off that, uh, the, idea, the idea was um, last week I met with both uh, Gray Robinson, who is our Longtime uh, state lobbyist and um, Alan, who we brought on. Uh, I added to the um, team for the special session in June, um, and uh, both uh, well, Alan Susky, Robert Stewart, and uh, Fred Leinhardt came to PSTA and met with me and actually Commissioner Janet Long was there, and we. Uh, we talked a little bit about the session and then communication all along about any thoughts they had on um, on talent asset. That may be the cab guy. Do you want to take it? It's, uh, right. Wayne Gay said he's on his way. Oh, Wayne well, is. Hello? Yes, hi. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, you do. You have mine. Green. It's green. Okay. We were planning to call in Gray Robinson, are we? There, um, I guess for the... Okay, yeah, if you can bring it to me. Um, yeah, uh, my like my glasses case might be with it. Uh, right. Black. Um, okay, so one day shows up. Once we go back to... Whether they had heard anything during the session, whether or not the, the, the 
learn about the Central Avenue BRT project itself. There was something to do with the project that wasn't supported by anyone and they had not heard that. There was some discussion at the very beginning of the um, session back in um, March that Representative Peters um, wasn't so sure about the alignment of the corridor as it pertains to going out to the beaches. And, but a um, bunch of information during the session about that. And by the end, it didn't seem like that was really a concern. And, and um, she, she became a supporter. Um, at the chamber policy meeting that uh, you and I were uh, there, I guess um, Travis talked to her a little bit about the BRT project. And, um, still said she was a supporter, but one question about how we might move forward. Um, both Senator Latvala and Senator Brandis told our both lobbyists that they would be supportive, or they would um, offer their support or even go with us to meet with the Secretary of Transportation to try to get the study of Central Avenue BRT funded directly from the Florida DOT um, outside of the state. And um, so we definitely intend to uh, see if we can take advantage of that. Um, so, um, and I apologize, I thought I made copies of um, the, that agenda that I gave to the, to the executive committee. Um, I mean, I've on. got my copy if you want okay. to look at well, it. Well, you might just show Ben that. Okay. Uh, basically, I typed that up, just kind of list all the different activities that we hope to accomplish this summer as far as the strategy goes. Meet with, the, meet with the lobbyists, get their read on where things are at, then they suggested that we stick with the project and, and keep, it on, keep it on the list for next year. They they heard um, Senator Lavallis show support for um, the Clearwater to the airport service, um, and so they thought um, there wouldn't be any problem by adding in a second priority. Now I will say that um, the challenge with the Clearwater Beach to the airport service is it it may have a significant capital component to it. It's really um, a service that uh, would be an express bus service from the beach to the airport, and uh, depending on whether we bought special buses for it or not, what we really need there is operating. Operating funding uh, that we don't currently have budgeted. The legislature doesn't typically commit itself to a legislative process, or at least that I have seen, to a perpetual funding of a project. Um, you know, there have been some exceptions. They funded Sunrail for seven years, etc. But what Senator Labala uh, at least told me. When we went through this last year, and what his committee, what his committee uh, oversees, typically capital projects, um, maybe funding in the neighborhood of five to two or three million dollars, preferably one time. Um, and so, the Clearwater project is not particularly uh, well suited for that, but I think it has broad support. Um, Brad, the intercounty connector? It could fall into the intercounty. Because it could fall into that, right? It could. Um, so, but that that would take um, the legislature uh, sort of earmarking that within the specific uh, Florida you DOT pot funding. It's just a little bit of a, uh, a nuance to that project, which is different than the Central Avenue BRT. The, the, the Central Avenue is capital intensive, and that's what we were asking for the money for was the capital. The Clearwater service 
uh, doesn't necessarily have that capital component to it. Um, so I'm sorry, you said the CPBRT is capital intensive? Yeah. The $16.5 million cost estimate for the Central Avenue BRT mm -hmm. is the capital cost of the service. Clearwater, the Clearwater Express service to the airport is $2 million a year. Perpetually. Operating. Operating, yeah. How is it that um, we, have, we accommodate the operating expenses for the St. Pete BRT line? Is it that we already have some type of bus service there and we're just changing? Right, the route? we already have bus service. Okay. That this would actually replace, okay. um, and so that it's a net, um, a much lower number. I think the, the annual operating cost of the, the net operating cost of the central avenue is 400, 400 and some thousand. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me, again, what's the beach to TIA? Is how much operating a year? Total cost is roughly about two million dollars. Uh, operating. Well, the, the Central Road BRT is also uh, north of a million. I can't remember the exact number, but the, there's so much existing service that it, we're already paying for in that corridor that this would supplant. But the net is. Mm -hmm. This is not a, and, and I apologize for being late. My daughter had surgery last month and she had to go back to the doctor. A is out because she was quarterback and all that. So I don't really do anything on Monday, but anyway. Um, isn't the um, the fair, fair bus service for the BRT, isn't that going to be a premium service for people that are going to pay for it? It's not going to be like when you're riding a bus. Or is, or is it? So I'm talking about revenue from the capital call. Well, or is that taken into consideration? That, that does take that into consideration. Okay. Well, you say it was some, it was some sort of plan some of the existing services that we had, but the service that we had is just nominal fees, they're not premium fees. Like right, but like, uh, for example, the route number 18 goes up and down Seminole Boulevard to Clearwater, goes to, goes to Grand Central, goes to Tyrone Mall, and then it comes north and south to Grand Central, and then it comes down all the way to Williams Park uh, in downtown St. Pete. And um, that, that bus, we're paying uh, some amount of operating cost for that driver and fuel today, that uh, um, terminate at Tyrone or maybe Grand City, um, and then would no longer go into downtown Big Pete, and we'd save that money because we wouldn't have. I was going to say, when you went to grid system, those ones that are running, because I live at 18 and you got a BRT, you wouldn't do that, but you'll be able to get that. I hope they'll be able to stop. One of the stops will be at a, a major intersection like a, a park in, in Central or something like that because it's going yeah. on that end because it's going all the way down. And instead of that bus having to come down, they could do what it normally does. So you're right, it would say because it would have to go into downtown. So I was going to ask you also how would the, you know, um, migrating to a grid system affect that? Because, I mean, you know, the existing service in that corridor. Because it was off. Right now, all of it's going to where you park. And then, uh, many of the buses that go through South uh, St. Petersburg and Gulfport, and um, they come up and then they Avenue South, some street, uh, MLK or way out of Grand Central, somewhere on First Avenue North and South. Um, there's like of the 20 some routes that go to Williams, it's only like eight of them come in on First Avenue North and South. Yeah, if you, if you look at the system map, you can see all those lines for those records. Yeah. Oh, first. Um, so that, with the grid, that'll be kind of just fanned out uh, in downtown St. Pete. And so if once we have the Central Avenue BRT, that will be the main uh, east-west. Leaving St. Petersburg, or coming into St. Petersburg, you'll want to take the Central Avenue BRT, or the Central Avenue Trolley. Um, those will be your main options. But, um, 
The only thing they won't have, if you got to bear in mind, is that right now all those buses that go up and down first half, north and south, make a lot of stops. BRT is not going to do that. So this discussion is a strategy, and I kind of feel the, the clock is ticking, but because the, the whole legislative session is pushed up, um, we need to make a recommendation at the agenda of the priorities today and then send this to our executive committee and then by August 5th, this committee, the next time we meet, needs to recommend the final state priorities, federal two, so that by Wednesday, August 26th, board meeting, we're actually going to be approving our state and federal priorities. So. I, these discussions are helpful, but we're getting a little bit in the weeds. Uh, I think where you were going with this is that we could keep the Clearwater BRT in the list, but yeah. and that is a project that Latval, Senator Latvala has expressed some interest in. But the reality is, is uh, I mean, it's it doesn't hurt us to keep it. In, but realistically, it's the Central Avenue BRT, which really has still remains our top priority. Yeah. Madam Chair, I would, I would interject that while it may be a little bit in the weeds, details of, of what swayed in the left out. We were up there on the legislative session. He was totally against any funds in his budget for Central Avenue BRT. But I reminded him that to say P properties have the capacity in hotel space to bring people who was brought up this high they mm -hmm. come from the beach area because so they go out to use the beach and the restaurants and also uh, to the game. So when I told him that the uh, First Avenue uh, South was right next to that shop, he goes, oh, I never looked at it that way. I think that, that's something I can probably look at. So we might need to make sure that we bring all these small details up, at least to the body that's going to be for additional funds, because I'm telling you, they got their own rendition of, of mm -hmm. what's, what's going on. And you know, so you, you, you can see right. basically, I think um, Chair Rice is correct. On page 13, I'm recommending essentially uh, that unlike last year where we had one top priority, which was the Central Island BRT, this year we would we would have two. Okay. We would put the Clearwater Project number two and have that on the as our two priorities. I would concur because Lisa you knows that we heard him. He was talking about the traffic. Uh, the uh, the plan, uh, the path forward plan, called for us to reach out to more people and be a board to have the legislation approved by August 26th. Uh, the goal would be by it on or about that day, we'd also have maybe uh, our next executive committee meeting with Hart, uh, and Hart would have a uh, legislative agenda, and that we could maybe. Um, on August 26th, the board could maybe be presented with a combined legislative agenda for both PSCA and HART that we go up hand in hand to Tallahassee together. Um, uh, well, we would be hand in hand, then we'd each have our own lobbyists, so we'd have a people up there advocating for the same sheet of music. Um, be where the, uh, of course, the regional fair collection project fits in. That's something we're doing in partnership with Hart. I think the BRT pro or the, the um, also would be something that coordinate with Hart. I think they have some bus traffic transit projects as well in Hillsborough County. But um, if, if we could show support for theirs and they could show support for ours um, as a regional perspective, I think that would help. The other piece, of course, would be the city of St. Petersburg. If it's putting together a legislative agenda in Pinellas County, the St. Pete Chamber, other chambers, uh, that would help. The, lo the lobbyists identify champions for the projects. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the targeted champion for the Central Avenue BRT would be Representative Kathleen Peters. And the Clearwater uh, project, this is in the House, would be um, Representative Chris Latvala, is what they suggested. And um, and then on the Senate side would be Senator Latvala for the Clearwater project, and then Senator Brandis for the. My, my suggest that once we get those, we 
definitely look at uh, the branding and a little bit uh, how we repackage these projects when we come back the second time. I mean, talking about the Clearwater and the St. Pete plan together, I mean, we're basically talking about ways to use bus buses to get people And it paints a economic development tourism picture when you're, and I think when we go to our champions and other decision makers, it shows that we're thinking strategically about how to use our infrastructure assets to get people to the beaches. Right. So, you know, I don't have any 
super great ideas off the top of my head this morning about how we would rebrand that or market that, but I do think that we need to maybe think of a, a different way to present it that maybe sounds a little less technical, a little less, you know, and also more accurate because it's not Central Avenue, it's along those lines, which is that when this goes to the board in August, and I don't know if Ray Robinson would be willing to do this, but we're going to have our sort of one pager, which we always have, which mm -hmm. this is the start of, right? Right. But it would be nice if the one pager came with it, like a short memo and with some recommendations, summary as to what we've done and some recommendations as to, in other words, they're recommending in their meeting with you that we stick with the project, that we support, that we have some champions, you know, that, you know, part of my concern with the bus rapid transit in St. Petersburg is that because it didn't pass, somebody might say, well, it didn't pass, so why are we going back there? You know, there wasn't the support for it the first time. And I think if we can show that we've thought through that, that it may take more than one effort to get this right. approved. And maybe we just summarize that and say, I don't know if they ever prepare, you know, sort of like a strategy memo. No, I think I think that's that's a great idea to have them prepare like a strategy memo. I was explaining that. I mean, right. I mean, summarizing who the legislative they anticipate the champions to be, yeah. and just so that other people on the board can see what we're hearing. Yeah. And I, I think these um, these leave behinds on the heavy card stock are really good, but we might even want to think of like a packet where there could be a couple of fact sheets on the economics, you know, operating versus capital expenses for the two BRT project and just and it's sort of like a FAQ and anticipate what the questions are and have it be there where they can easily access that information. And yeah. Um, this, you know, this is the great leave behind, but those packets would also be great for our community partners so that they, so that they're ready to stand up and discuss and debate and advocate with um, that information in their back pocket. That, that's definitely the case. I mean, during the we produced probably 20 more pages of detailed analysis on the Central Avenue BRT project about its alignment about its ridership, about its economic, what we did develop, we produced all that for the legislature as was okay. requested. Um, we haven't had any analysis other than the, than the community bus study on the Clearwater project. So that will we'll have to do that. One thought that Cassandra had, which I think was a great idea, in to, um, God, Darden suggested about looking at the sort of economics of the beach Service is partner with the MPO yeah. and with Blanton on that. That um, he's talking about doing some work looking at that about how we provide transportation to our economy and the beaches. May, you know, may, maybe he could provide so we could partner with the MPO, and maybe the MPO could actually be the author of a study of how two lines or even one of the lines um, mm -hmm. might, might uh, benefit land use, benefit the tourism economy, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to get out with the calendar. To play Great. It's <coughs> well, um, this was an informational item on this agenda, but if you'd like to take a list, then I can come back and the committee on August 5th mm -hmm. with the one pager and maybe maybe some background materials like the strategy memo, etc. I think that's a good idea in light of the timeline. So I'll make that motion. All in favor? I got kind of a question of motion. If the reason I wouldn't touch that. Switch up my phone. It's the same thing. Yeah. Also central runs from the from the bay to the golf. I think it was with it in the legislature and became, it was printed out as St. Petersburg here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, St. Pete.
Adopting these priorities, recommending these priorities, we're, we're not really getting into the words that we're we're just talking about. We know what project we're talking about. So, any other questions about the motion? I didn't hear a second. Uh, do you need a oh, second, second and a second, second, Okay, second. all in favor? Aye. 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 So let's go back to our action items and let's look at the May meeting minutes, which are in your packet. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, we this next action item, we're going to call in Gray Robinson. Regarding a, a one year, an amendment for a one year extension. And this item corresponds with page seven. It's here in your packet. It's here. So our, our current lobby. Our state contract lobbying contract with Gray Robinson ends on August 22nd, 2015. Oh, I think I'm incorrect in that statement. Our um, extended their agreement for three additional years until August 1st, 2015. That's right is a recommendation to amend that contract for and work with them for an, an additional 10 months. The board uh, back in 2012 extended August uh, 22nd, extended the three additional years to August 15, which is right now. So the options that are before us are either to do a new RFP um, or to, uh, there is an option to extend Gray Robinson for up to another year under the existing agreement. The idea was because the session, because the legislature is meeting early and that there would be not enough time to conduct an RFP to lobbyists on board, we would already missed the whole committee process. The executive committee of PFPA met, discussed this, and uh, recommended that we um, extend Gray Robinson for another year. While, while extending them, we also want to amend the contract to do two things. Number one, add the performance criteria that we added to the federal lobbyist contract. Um, the same kind of performance criteria, which wasn't in the um, 2011 Gray Robinson contract. It didn't have any performance criteria. But now they would have, uh, which are listed there in the contract now. Um, and Gray Robinson has agreed to this um, on page 10. Uh, or that now they would submit our legislative strategy, which we just talked about, et cetera. So that would be added to the contract. The second, and perhaps more sub consultant to their contract. And they've agreed to that agree to that. And so we would extend the contract. The thought would be not to extend it for another year, but to extend it for 10 months till May 31st of next year. The legislative session is scheduled to end on a, at the end of March. So the governor um, approval process is that will happen in April. So this is gives us a little bit of a cushion um, going to May 31st. We would try to issue an, a new RFP for state lobbyists or lobbyists 
probably April 15, right after the session ends, essentially. And that would give us enough, um, the longest period of time because the next session will is scheduled to be a normal um, you know, March 1st start. So the committees will be back, will be later, and there'll be more. The Great Robinson contract is a set um, for the whole year. They, they represent us for the whole year. Same thing. Same thing would be for Alan Susky. So if there was a special session, they would. If we extend this contract, then they would. Represent us. Well, well, I'm going. This is the end, and uh, the session ends uh, May 31st, 2016. Is that the contract end? That would be the contract end. By then, we would have a new lobbyist contract because we have our, we would already. Okay. There might be a little overlap if there was a special session. Yeah, last um, in June. actually talking about your contract um, extension and, and that process. Perfect timing for that, yeah. Thank you. Yes. I have some, I have some questions and some comments on this. I, I think it makes sense to um, identify. Ben Diamond. Um, I think it makes sense to um, extend the agreement with Ray Robinson for the purpose of uh, because the because the session is starting earlier, just to get us through this, the next session. But I would support that only with the understanding that this will all be put out to bid um, for um, through an RFP process next year because it, it will have been five years since we've gone through a process. But I I have the Susky Consulting Firm. I I don't know anything about them. Um, so can can you or somebody brief us about them and sure yeah um and I believe Alan Alan are you on the phone? I am Brad. Oh. So, um, Good Alan? morning, Fred Lenhardt here. Oh hi. Hi Fred. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, Alan Susky is a a lobbyist in Tallahassee, um, or I have a lobbying practice uh, there. He is from Pinellas County and um, has very strong relationships with both Senator Brandis uh, and Lab Ballot and, all, and the whole delegation. And when it came uh, time to start the special session, since we had our BRT money in the Senate budget, um, but we didn't have it in the House, uh, that we could uh, utilize Allen to just kind of maintain our support in the Senate and maintain communication with the, our two senators and the, and the Senate, keep it in there, and then focus Gray Robinson on the House to get to add. Um, when we met the uh, Allen and the Gray Robinson guys and myself last week, they recommended, and I think it's appropriate, that we don't do that sort of uh, delineation of like, one take the House, one take the Senate, kind of thing anymore that they all they all need to communicate with there's so much communication in Tallahassee with both the House and the Senators that um, it just makes better sense to have a whole team. But um, the idea of adding Alan Susky would be to really add a Pinellas based component to our lobby team. I guess, you know, and Mr. Susky, don't take any offense that what I'm saying, I'm just trying to understand the arrangement because by adding you into this contract, we're not really just extending the contract, we're sort of changing the player's head, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, 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 I guess you could say we're enhancing the contract. 
And we're but almost doubling sure. the cost. But I, I want to understand how this works in terms of the payments because so we were paying Ray Robinson a monthly retainer of five thousand dollars a month. That's right. Okay. And so now we're paying a retainer of nine thousand dollars a month under yeah. this proposed agreement. Yeah. And that would that four thousand dollars per month go to the sub consultant? Yes. Okay. I guess my concern with this is just Committee meetings will start to occur in September. Our agendas are already getting prepared for those meetings, and we've got to be moving very rapidly since the session will start in January instead of March. So I think this is a, a, good, a good move, and we look forward to making this uh, even more effective for PFT. Yes. Okay. Fred, this is Brad. Have you, have you or anyone else on the phone heard any uh, late-breaking news on any kind of special session or change to the schedule due to the redistricting issue? Uh, I, I know that that has been a significant topic of discussion going on in House and Senate leadership. Um, I, I have not heard anything specific on a date. Anybody, Robert, or anything? Mr. Robert Stewart, I've not heard any specifics, but, but it would be safe to assume, I think, from a procedural perspective, that they would want to have this behind them, uh, they being the legislature, before they start committing substantive matters for the 2016 session in September. So if a special session is called or when it's called, my guess is it will happen for those committee September, uh, those committee meetings in September, and then the special session would be specific to the redrawing of the districts and nothing else. That's my guess. Okay. Alan, um, um, let's say you're uh, a Pinellas County firm. Would that make you a would that make you a St. Pete resident? Uh, well, I, unfortunately, I uh, had to move to Tallahassee because of my business. But um, I, I have an office in St. Pete on 4th Street. Yes. Good man. I'm down there, I'm <laughs> still down there two, three times. It's so Williams Park. <laughs> What's that? Is it right next to Williams Park? Yeah, right next to it. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. And, and, and Brad, I just wanted to add, uh, building on Fred's comments, some of your comments earlier, uh, uh, thank you all for the vote of confidence. I look forward to those that I don't know uh, on the committee, Mr. Diamond, uh, uh, you especially. Look forward to seeing you all when I'm down there and spending a little time with you and talking about how excited we are to, to work with you. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so our... Uh, next meeting is August 5th, and that's when we can uh, talk a little bit more about refining a strategy for the uh, priority list. Um, we'll also talk about specifics uh, as we go into our joint legislative meeting with, P with HART. Um, and I see that our state lobbyist are is on the list here for a future meeting subject. So I guess if there's anything that changes as this goes through different committees or goes to the main board, um, that might bounce back, but uh, hopefully it doesn't. It will no longer be August. Okay. If, if I may, Matt, Brad, when we go upstairs, upstairs, I think we're in city hall work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go downstairs. I thought it was all, I thought it was just Ray Roberts bringing in the money yeah. and they go with and, and, and that, that's what was mentioned. Oh, I see. Oh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, to me, originally when, when Ben first mentioned it, I thought it, it just threw somebody in and gave him four grand. I said, come go with us. But that was at the behest of... Uh, yeah, it was, it was all right. right. Right, and I think that the rest of the members should know that and um, understand the time thing. And RFP, it's, it's the clearest way. I advocate for that strong. I'm, I'm probably the biggest... <laughs> RFP guy anywhere, but um, with the time constraint, by the time we go through that, we'll be the yeah. this whole if, session. If I may, I think Commissioner Diamond brought up some really valid points, but I also think our CEO put a lot of good thought into this. Yes. And is someone who I know who I've worked with before, 
and notably, when he ran three bridges, he was a lobbyist with the person who was a congressman. So Mr. Suske brings in considerable friendships and professional to Congressman Jolly as well as Senator Jeff Brandis. Well, so and that, and that, makes, me feel, <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel great about the decision. It was a, it was news to me. That's yes. all. And I um, I you know I think starting the RFP process early that we have time you know and I don't know how early that is but I would just suggest that we don't wait until I mean if we need the lobbyists in place you know in the summertime or whatever. Well right. Yeah. It's, it's and, like and a because we don't want to get ourselves in the same box where our contract is expiring. And then because it delays in the session or a special yeah. session or we need to be lobbying or we pass it and we need to be lobbying the governor's office to make sure it's not vetoed. I mean, we want to have a team up there. Right. And, of course, the, in the guidance you get from the lobbyists is, oh, no, there's never a good time to do an RFP. <laughs> and, uh, possibly, you know, it's always better to extend. Um, and uh, so, to me, it seems like the sweet spot would be right after session, um, you know, with some overlap. Now, hopefully it'll work perfectly smoothly like that, but, you know, one uh, another idea would be to try to make, um, maybe model, and I think this is how Pinellas County did their RFP, is, is go into it with the ability to hire a team, um, or hire more than one lobbyist, depending on what attributes they bring to the table. Well, and, and I think... I mean, we know how difficult the, the lay of the land is with Tallahassee and how important it is to have to work with these advocates that have these relationships. And right or wrong, love it or hate it, that's really the way Tallahassee operates by yeah. and large. But um, certainly, I, I, I feel a little bit comforted by the fact that this is a 10-month extension. So there's going to be some expectations, and they're going to be held to... Uh, performance metrics because we're going to make a decision in short order based on the work they've done. So I would think that that would be uh, an incentive yeah. to go all out because <laughs> it's the chance of whether we sign them on for the next three years after yeah. that. And I think Mr. Diamond is dead on. We said, you know, it's been five years and so we're definitely going out for that. So I think they tend to receive. I think uh, it'd be fine. I just wanted to make sure it was clear to the board when we went upstairs that it wasn't. Uh, Ray Robinson that got an additional person that came to the behest of the Daniel Robert CEO. Okay. Is there any other business? Because if not, we can adjourn this meeting. I do have. But what's the next step in the heart PSDA? I think we have a, a joint meeting in August, but you and the and, um, Captain. We met and we're trying to get that scheduled, but um, uh, we're trying to get a August uh, exec joint executive committee meeting um, scheduled, oh, which okay. hasn't been scheduled yet. I think it's going to be after August 5th, so um, so we'll meet again before. Uh, they, Catherine agreed to take to their legislative committee and their executive committee, which I think is one and the same. Um, this idea that they would develop a legislative agenda and then we would we would find commonality on a, on a common agenda um, by the end of August. Or but right. if I may, if I if I think I see where you're going with this, I think the joint legislative meeting would benefit from having our executive board participating as well, if they want to. Oh. If 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 um, if Bill and Janet and whoever else want to be a part of that discussion. That's a good idea. That, that, that might be a possibility. You know, we have a August 3rd, August 3rd is the Executive Committee of PSDA scheduled, and then August 5th is the Legislative Committee. Wasn't one of those days the possible day for the heart meeting? Remember, Rachel? I'd have to look back at my... Okay. All We're trying to get the... Um, scheduling with hard is, is, is a challenge, of, you know, probably another order of magnitude. So okay. I just okay. I just wanted to sort of clear that up in my mind as to where we're going with that. I had one other just mm -hmm. very brief item. I asked for to make a copy of something that oh, I thank you. 
I put out. It was just kind of a stream of consciousness, and I just share this. There's, I'm not asking really for any any feedback on this, but maybe if it helps uh, um, a uh, trigger any thoughts on the, the rest of your parts. Uh, I'm, I did this because I'm meeting with Brad later. I just thought it was kind of put it together, but it's, it's probably something that will go into our Well, thank you uh, for providing this, and I think um, uh, there's a couple of things that stand out to me that are helpful. I think this uh, historical background on public transit is very useful, and as we talked about earlier, it's very much in line with part of the MPO training. And I think it's interesting about what the average member of the public doesn't know about PSTA. Um, you know, sometimes we're the fish that don't know we're in water. <laughs> and it's good to keep in mind uh, how to communicate uh, what people to the general public and always keep in mind that as part of our communication efforts, not to, if we if we skip communicationals, we, we might lose some people. So I think this is um, helpful. I think if, um, I think there's a lot of great services that PSA provides that a about so yeah it's our job as board to tell them the one that pops up to me is don't be measured that with our uh, communication web hit all that stuff don't be measured that try to get, keep a pencil on man track of the usage no we do it and you can do the uh, performance report they don't normally have all of how many web hits Rachel they have it, they have the web hits and how many people visit the page and stuff like that we do. We do. We do. But that that's coming to us. What I thought you were going to say is, seems to our customers use the Wi-Fi. I was going to say, what yeah. usage? I mean, you can, you yeah. can tell. Oh, yeah, we, 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 we have some data on that. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. has come from the vendor. I mean, because they just can't give you that and say it's going to work. Because you got to know that it's working. And they can't do I that. was noting at the last panel of MPO meeting, they were giving that come. They were, uh, Staffer was giving our presentation on sort of their public input committee process and highlighting the Pinellas MPO website and how many hits they get. Yeah. And the number that they had got the number from like 2009 was the number that we get every single month. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been right Yeah, I mean the website, website, and now now our real time is just constantly being. Used to find out, you know, where their what, where their bus is, or when the comes. And the Wi-Fi, they, they track that. Is it a when you click the step? They don't use an email. You can just click and the step that the um, the policy, and you can get on. Yeah, That's pretty much the way it works. So when that they become really popular, you know, mm -hmm. Mike addresses the subject somewhere. They have to. So you know, using it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We'll join Thank this you. meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you're here safe and sound. Thank you. Brad, accident with his family this morning. Everybody. Yes, I thought about you from St. Pete. I'm like, oh, maybe I need to get a ride with one of them. Sergeant Pep driving. I should have you up. While we were standing there, I saw two more car accidents. Oh, really? Yeah. I was with the policeman. He's like, there's another one. There's another one. Yeah. That little party avenue area is kind of tricky, huh? Yeah. Well, when the traffic backs up, it's like it's kind of like a little hill. And I think he was. Right? Yeah. yeah. They come over the hill really fast and they. The back of the traffic. Yeah. yeah. And then, thank you for navigating your phone. Well, I, then I took a cab to get here. I left my phone on the cab. 
So then I didn't find my Born phone, and I saw that it was moving around St. Petersburg, <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't here. I had a friend once chase yes. a cab 